everyone, Bill Nichols here, Bill Nichols TV. Today I wanna to bring you another set of tips to help you pass the part 107, the remote pilot test. So previously, I had talked about METARs, and actually in that video, I had accidentally said that the METAR was a forecast, and it's not, it's a meteorological aerodrome report. I had said that, but then somewhere through the conversation, I just said that it was a weather forecast, and it's absolutely not. It was just an accident while I was talking. I think of weather, I think of forecast, but it is a point in time report letting you know that at this point in time, at this location, these were the weather conditions. And today we're gonna talk about forecasts. So we're gonna talk about a TAF, which is your terminal aerodrome forecast. And a TAF is a weather forecast for a station. They're usually valid for 24 hours and they're a concise um, statement of the expected meteorological conditions given at that station. And they contain a sequence of elements. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put a presentation up on the screen. I'm gonna run through, this is just a two slide presentation, but I'm gonna run through, show you a TAF, show you how they're constructed. They look very similar to a METAR. You can just think of them as a METAR on steroids. And we're gonna run through a sample question that you would get, show you how you would find the data in the TAF to answer that sample question, then really break the TAF down in detail and show you what you're looking at. So a TAF report contains the following sequence of elements in this order. It starts with the type of report, which you're just gonna see probably TAF. It gives you the station identifier, the date and the time that this TAF was um, executed, and then the valid period date and time. So the TAF is going to go from a start date to an end date, typically 24 hours, like I said. And then um, it's going to give you a forecast of meteorological conditions. Then it's gonna give you how the weather's going to change during that forecast. So let's jump right into the TAF. So you might see a question. We'll go through the question first. I'll break down the TAF and then we'll find the answer. And so you will get a question like this on the test with this same TAF. So this TAF is actually the TAF that's pulled from the part 107 testing supplement. So you'll get something that says like refer to figure 15. How does the weather change from 2200 Zulu to 0200 Zulu? Now, if you remember back on the METAR, you're not gonna get something like this. You're going to get what is the weather at blah, 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 at such and such airport. And it's going to show you a METAR with probably three or four different stations. So let's just look at this one. So you've got KMEM. Um, so that's the station identifier. Then on the 12th day of the month at 1720 Zulu, this TAF was issued. It's valid from the 12th day of the month at 1800 to the 13th day of the month at 2400 or midnight. So with the times here, if it was valid from midnight, you would have had 12, zero, zero. So if it starts at midnight, it starts with a zero, zero. And if it ends at midnight, it ends at 24. So from 12, 18 to 13, 24, you're going to have a wind blowing at 200 degrees true at 12 knots. You're going to have five statute miles of visibility. There's going to be haze, uh, a broken ceiling at 3,000 feet, prob 40. This is a probability that the next statement is going to happen. And this is prob 40, which means that it's about 40%. It's just that the probability of this happening is more than 30% and less than 50. So that's what prob 40 means. And it says 2022. So think of this with a line right in between 20 and 22 after that probability clause, and that this is at 20 hundred hours to 2200 hours, you might get one statue mile of visibility thunderstorms with rain in an overcast ceiling at 800 feet. Okay, so that's basically like a METAR right there. Now let's jump down to the next set, which is the continuation of the forecast. So it's saying FM 2200. The FM is just from. From 2200, you have a 330 degree wind at 15 gusting to 20 knots. P statute miles means that it's plus six statute miles of visibility. Uh, broken ceiling at 1500 feet. Overcast to 2,500 feet. Again, probability of 40. So prob 40 from 2,200 to 02, visibility of three statute miles with showers and rain. Okay, and then from 0,200, you have a 350 degree wind at 12 knots. It's overcast at 800 feet with a 40% probability, approximately 40% from 02 to 05 of two statute mile two statute miles of visibility, and the minus in front of the RA means light rain, possible snow, becoming from 0600 to 0800, 
a 20 degree eight knot wind, the broken ceiling at 1200 feet, then that's becoming from 1310 to 1312. Uh, no wind, three statute miles, a uh, little bit of mist, so BR. Uh, doesn't say a little bit, but just mist, so BR. Uh, sky clear. Uh, tempo from 1212 to 1214, a half statute mile of fog. Then from th the 13th at 1600, a variable degree wind at six knots, more than six statute miles of visibility, and sky's clear. So the question was, how does the weather change from 2200 to 0200 Zulu? So we can go right here and see from 0200, we have a 350 degree wind at 12 knots. It's overcast at 800 feet. A probability of 40% from two to five that there will be two statute miles in rain plus snow, rain and snow. So you can see here, the ceiling drops from 1500 to 800. Lightning will start. There was no indication of lightning in this report. The skies become clear. We do see the skies becoming clear, but that's not until 1310 to 1312, and then from 13 at 1600. So we can immediately get rid of one of these, lightning. Lightning wasn't indicated. The skies become clear, so they do, but this is asking you the weather change from 2200 to 0200. So remember right here, from 2200, we have this wind, these statute miles, broken at 1500, overcast at 2500. Um, so we see the ceiling drops from 1500 to 800. Well here at 2200, it did say broken ceiling at 1500. Here at from 0 200, the wind has changed, and then we have overcast at 800 feet. So the ceiling has dropped from 1500 to 800 feet. So we've got right here, it's going to be number two. The ceiling drops from 1500 to 800. So what I recommend, and this is how I did it because what I, what I did at first, and this caused me on some sample tests to get the question wrong, is that I would take the answers I would go, boom, lightning will start, and I would look through the whole thing and go for lightning, light, light, lightning, no. Let's see, the ceiling drops from 1,500 to 800. So I'd look for overcast at 800, right? So I'd find, boom, overcast 800 feet, and then I would then I'd look up above, go, oh, okay, it was 1,500, now it's 800, and I would probably select that. And just my dumb ADD taking over, I would select that as the answer, but then the times were off. So what I like to do is I will go through this report and you get scratch paper. So I'd really quickly write down the actual weather report and what it means in English. So for the first one, I would write down the first line. Then on the next line, I would say, from 2200, I'm gonna have this wind, these statute miles, and this. Then I would write down the next from, from 0200. Then I could really quickly go, okay, it's asking me from 2200 to 02. So I could look at my paper and go, 2200 is right here, and here's what I said. 02 is right here, here's what I said. Here's the difference and then I would find that in here. And generally, there's one or two that you can just eliminate because of this. So that is um, your TAFs. I'm gonna give you some resources below where there's a legend for TAFs, a place where you can go and you can read some TAFs and they'll break it down really nicely. So look for those links. And if you're having a hard time with this stuff, go check out drumepilotgroundschool.com, 50 bucks off. Uh, the response has been phenomenal. I think over a 99% pass rate. I passed on my first try uh, with a 96%. Yeah, go check it out. You guys have an awesome day. So we got a lot of stuff coming up this week. We've got obviously this video. I'm going to have a new Lightroom video come up. Um, an unboxing of the Nikon Key Mission 360. A brief review of this thing, the MacBook Pro 13. I'll tell you it is slower than the 15 um, in rendering. I expected it to be. Overall, not a bad computer. Look for my review in the next couple of days. And uh, you guys keep watching. I'll keep making videos. If you have any questions around this stuff, Ask below. Tell me what you think of this video. How'd you like it? And then uh, look forward to talking to you guys soon. So have an awesome day. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos.